Right here is the new design of the marble drops for the Marble Machine X. This is the first prototype of the design. It's designed to be able to drop 10 million marbles without failing. Today I'm going to do some minor tweaks on this CAD design and then I'm going to manufacture and hopefully assemble all the drops for the drums on the Marble Machine X. I'm gonna start with taking this off. And already this is a big advantage of this new design. It's easy to take the gates on and off. So the gates sit with two bolts and the steel structure is left on the machine. Very easy. This design has been working perfectly, but I want these to slide freely. And for that, I designed in quite a lot of slack and it's a little bit too much. So I wanna fix that. So first thing is fix top slack. Next, I designed way too much sideways slack here. I'm gonna add some meat on the sides here. So fix side slack. So I'm going to use this felt. So now I can adjust this length from here to here to adjust for this thickness. So we're gonna adjust for felt. And then in the bottom here, I pushed some felt in, but I want this to be very accurately in the dimension as well. So I'm gonna cut some pockets so we can push this felt in in a more controlled way. So let's do some felt pockets. Okay, so the first thing I want to fix is this top slack. Minus 0 0.5. Perfect. Next fix, side slack. And I'm basically just going to do this. Copy paste. And I'm just moving this profile line out. How much slack did I want to fix? 30. Yeah, I can add a millimeter. So I'm asking Fusion to move this line one millimeter. So here you can see the extra profile and I'm just going to extrude that to object down to this plane. Boom, enter. I know there's 100,000 engineers screaming at the screen now. Why are you not using the parametric function? Cause this is faster, okay? <laughs> and I'm lazy, okay? Adjust for felt. So here you can see that this is the bottom part and a fix that I forgot to mention on the table is that I want to increase the diameter of these holes. They don't need to be tight around the marble. Let's check, we have 18 now. Let's do 19. This hole doesn't need to clamp tight around the marble. We just want the marble to fall straight through the bottom while it access this hole. So it's better if I make it 19 millimeter the marble has a little more wiggle room to actually hit the hole correctly every time. This needs to work 10 million times in a row, so I'll give it a little extra slack. So now we're gonna adjust this plane for the thickness of the felt. So if I measure the distance from the backside of that metal thing to here, nine millimeter. And if I now measure the thickness of the felt, 6.5 I'm gonna do. So I wanna, I want this to be 6.5, which means, <laughs> quick math anyone, I have to extract it 2.5 millimeters. So that's our sketch. I can now extrude it, minus 18, boom. <laughs> Something went wrong there. What, what am I doing? Ah, I'm stupid. Minus 18, thank you. Now we have the last fix, felt pockets. So if I take a measurement from this front here to the backside there, 15.544, copy to click board. So I draw a line here and then I put a distance and then I hit paste. Then I know where the metal wants to be. So we're calculating the felt to be 6.5. So now I can offset this line, 6.5, the thickness of the felt. So that's our back. I'm cutting this away. So in these little pockets, I'm gonna clamp a little felt. So this is for the Hyatt and for the snare. And then we're gonna do something a little bit special for the kick drum and the cymbal because we're gonna make a double one. Copy, paste, new component with some more freedom. Thank you. Then they're not linked. Point to point, the best move command there is. Point to point, <laughs> remember that. And here it is, my space invader setup. <laughs> Very nice, we're ready for the CNC machine. Let's go.
just like with laser cut parts, the CNC machine parts needs quite a lot of post-processing. Some of them I can sand right away. All these parts with holes I could hold down with screws so I didn't need any tabs. All the other parts I have to remove these tabs. I just discovered a mistake here. You can see that the top here is a little bit oval. I thought it looked strange, but I was like, okay. I didn't think of it. But these are meant to receive PMMA pipes and the PMMA pipes doesn't fit. For some reason, I think I programmed the bit to stay away from the edge of the contour. So I have to recut these. So I can use the old slots to position the parts. Now when I turn my machine off, I've lost my zero, but I drilled down in the zero point. I never do that, but I was thinking maybe I need to find my zero again. And now I need that, so I'm very happy. So now the machine knows where the old parts were. If I can just fit the parts back correctly, we can recut this with enough precision. So I'm double checking the precision by feeling the play around the edges and I mean, it's okay. This position will not affect the one in 10 million marble fail. Okay, let's see. Interesting. I think this was a blessing in disguise because this fit is too tight. I'm gonna recut this and remove 0.2 millimeters extra from the edge for a better fit. So in a future episode, when I'm bending these PMA pipes and they go in easily in the marble gates, you can remember this. Nothing bad that doesn't have something good coming along with it. We have a much better tolerance here. Perfect. One of my goals with this design is to reduce friction in this mechanical movement. So this shuttle here, I'm going to create a kind of a snowboard underneath so it can't catch on any edges. I'm just gently rounding off the corners. So now with these tiny snowboard chamfers, I'm preventing this part from catching the back edge of this hole. I have also a chamfer on the hole and the design up here actually also prevents the part from catching the hole. So I have one, two, three design features to prevent this from happening. And I think only one of these three would have been sufficient, but this is redundancy. And this is what I need to think about for all mechanical solutions to really reach that 10 million mechanical repetitions without fail goal that I'm working towards. Redundancy, thumbs up for redundancy. So this is finer grained sandpaper and I'm sanding all the sides of the plywood shuttle that will slide against other plywood surfaces. This way I get a really smooth finish which also reduces friction. In the end I'm using 600 graded sandpaper which is kind of fine and creates this glossy finish of the plywood. And then I'm applying the holy grail of anti-plywood friction, graphite powder. I love this stuff. My mom will be watching this and she will be like, Martin, why do you put graphite powder on <laughs> a white table? Uh, you're right, I shouldn't. Oh, I rubbed it into the table. Oh. I realized something really cool. If I put the graphite powder on this piece of plywood, I can then take the piece and really push it into the surface. I can push hard down and this becomes extremely slippery. I can kind of work the powder into the plywood. You see how glossy that is? This is extremely slippery now.
the shuttles are super smooth. I'm really happy about this. So these parts are done, now let's move to the lifting arm. Brilliant. <laughs> This is the latest design of the marble drop arms. I really think this will work 10 million times in a row without fail. I have designed this as an interlocking joint, so the pieces are self-positioning. I want to make a really nice well joint here and to align perfectly straight in all directions, I'm going to make a welding fixture for this. So here you can see the dropping arm in the CAD model. So I'm going to make a simple welding fixture for this. Et voila! Very practical and simple to make. Let's take away the arm and you can just see how the fixture looks. camera is in the way for my visibility. I aimed too much into this thin material, I have to aim the beam more into the thick material because the thin material will melt faster. I think I could have gone even colder, it was a little aggressive over here, but I managed to make a fillet, like a, almost like a perfect 45 degree fillet between this and this, and it has totally joined the two parts. I move the camera so I see a little bit better. I lower the heat setting and I'm gonna try to not blow this corner out like I did on the other side. I don't see anything. Ah, oh, this doesn't go well. So the issue to make this look nice is that this metal have so little mass compared to this metal. So this one I melt right away and this takes a lot of time to melt. So here's the ultimate benefit of the welding fixture. You can see how parallel this line is with this line. It looks perfectly straight and it's going to be very easy to get this result repeatedly when I make 38 of these arms. So this direction was actually the most important one because the parallelity from here to here is needed when you adjust the height of the marble drop up on this section. So this looks perfect, I'm super happy. I put the welds on the back side so the visible side will look like this, clean and nice. These two channels here differ, this is the symbol channels and the symbol has a lower marble drop so here we're only using the gate function. This arm is not dropping the marbles down here, another thing is dropping the marbles. So this was the prototype and what happens is that when I mount this I have to weld this connection here and I've burned the felt. Now I'm actually going to do that again but I need this felt here when I do the weld. 
because this felt is positioning this metal bar perfectly. So I'm actually gluing a temporary felt on and I'm gonna weld this, burn this felt off and then replace the felt when the welding is done. When I'm gluing this on, I don't wanna actually glue it on too well. I'm really going to remove this later on in the project. I just want it to stay there while we're working on the pieces. So in CAD I was talking about this distance from here to here and that is really crucial and I'm very curious now to see the result if I did a good job. So I didn't really know how these two felt pads would add to this position. Let's check. You see the opening here of the shuttle. I want the opening of the shuttle to be concentric with the opening for the marbles. It's not perfect. You can see a portion of this edge up there, the black graphite powder edge. It's actually not, and if I push it really hard, you see more of that edge coming down. I wish this shuttle stopped a millimeter earlier. Let's check if the marble falls down though. So obviously that, that falls down. This is interesting. If you think of it now, you can see the lower marble is to the left and the marble cue afterwards falls a little bit to the right, a very little. Which means that when this gate is opening, it has to kind of lift the marble cue on top. Whereas if its default position was a little bit more like that, the marble cue would actually push this gate out. And we want to reduce friction everywhere and we have to think of this. I should try to actually do something about this. So let's try a worst case scenario that will kind of never happen. I'm going to push as hard as I can and see if we can obstruct the marble from going into the gate. Yes, I could. So this would never happen and if it was only for this I wouldn't care but I do want to adjust this. I would say one millimeter. How much is a millimeter? <laughs> like these are the things I want to get right for redundancy. I'm going to try to shim both this felt and the felt down here with about a millimeter to keep the gate further out in its default position. So down here, I don't know how I can add a shim in a neat way. This fit was perfect, the groove for the felt was perfect. And up here, I don't want to glue like a one millimeter plywood layer in between the felt. It just doesn't make sense. The neatest and most precise solution is to actually add material to the metal bar. If Captain Context would have been here, I think it would have said like, for a few hundred marble drops, this precision is overkill. but to make the marble machine drop 10 million marbles without fail, you really want all these repetitive things be very, very predictable. So it's 8.00. Good job from a laser cutting facility. <laughs> I want this to become 9.00. I want to share a beginner's TIG welding trick that I learned from watching this Altone. This is so simple, but it's the best thing and I always think about this Altone when I do this. When I set up this weld and just welding it like this is kind of hard because I'm like shaking around. Just put support. I just take three plastic boxes, I lean my hand on the plastic boxes and I do the weld with the support here on the plastic boxes. Makes a huge difference. <laughs> Should I lower that temperature a little bit? Okay, so target is nine. 880. So the highest point is like 9.2. Yeah, this is perfect. So I changed to a clean tungsten tip. I have lowered the amperage to 30 and I have fixed the shade of my helmet so I should see a little bit better. I'm going to try to make a beam on top of this surface rather than melting this whole 8mm times 4mm metal bar. So it started pretty well, but then the whole part heats up and you have to kind of rush it. It looks messier on camera than in real life. <laughs> Perfect. All right, we added material here. So when I push this metal bar onto this felt, 
this shuttle stays more to the right in your screen. So if you check in here, you can see the concentricity when I just push it up. Then you can see that you can see actually a little bit more of the left side edge than what you can see of the right side edge. That's exactly what I wanted. So if I push it really hard in, we can get full concentricity. There will not be a lot of pressure here, so this is going to be the default position of the gate. Let's try with the marble. Go straight in, and disappears. So if I push hard in, unnaturally hard, and I drop the marble, it still falls straight down. It didn't do that in the previous configuration. And so now to the finer aspects of it all. If I push the gate to its default position, so this marble inside the gate will now be a little bit to the right of center of this circle. So when we add a second marble, the marble queue, this marble will now be a little bit to the left, leaning on the left side edge of that previous marble. This means that when the machine tries to open the gate, the queue is pushing the gate on to open. It's not causing extra friction that it has to lift the queue upwards. Small details like that, when you multiply them with 10 million, small differences like that adds up big time. This makes me very, very happy. <laughs> I think it's awesome. It only took me three years, okay? <laughs> I've welded all the shuttles and all the felt is on, so now we can assemble this. The last part to add on is the underside from these old Matrix Sentinel drum drops. I'm going to extract and use this underplate and these rails here. I have to tell a quick story about this for some context. <laughs> okay, so a quick comparison with the previous design that I'm removing. So the marble goes here in the top, just like on my new design, and then it fell down and was held here by this L hook. And when the part go back, the L hook dropped the marble down. So one fundamental difference of this new design is that when the marble falls down into the next compartment, it sits in the same part. It doesn't go down and the L hook has been totally removed. So that made it possible to make this whole uh, gate much more compact and elegant and functional. But the worst mistake on this previous design can be seen through this grinding of the metal here. Because these designs were leaning back. They were not standing like this, they were leaning back like this. And the marbles were dropped here and had to roll down this hill. So that's no, not a problem when this is 90 degrees to gravity. The marble will roll every time. But the problem is that it wasn't. The marbles could actually get stuck right there, lying on that hill. They had to roll uphill. And that problem became so bad, so I have to open these up and try to grind a downhill in the metal itself. So the L-hook came on the underside here. So they were edge cases where the L-hook kind of threw the marble back up the hill again. Look at that. It could kind of lie right there. <laughs> and when I was like seeing that for the first time, I ground this a little bit better and I was like, ah, oh, that's totally unlikely. But the thing is that it almost, 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 almost never happened. But if you multiply almost, almost, almost never with 10 million, you have a pretty good chance of it happening. So the fact that in this design the marble was dropping down there and had to roll forward caused a lot of problems. On the new design the marble path is completely vertical through this obstacle course. So gravity is helping us through each step. So step one, gravity wants the marble to fall into the shuttle. Step two, gravity wants the marble to fall down in the second compartment. Step three, gravity wants the marble to go straight down. It doesn't have to roll forward or roll uphill. I 
thought there would be no angle grinding in this video, but I was wrong. <laughs> So the context here is that I designed something that worked, then I had a flaw and I grinded all this material away and now I'm filling this hole in again. <laughs> Before I started welding I didn't know that you could do this actually. When you fill in a hole and then grind it down you can actually repair it without any trace of the repair. Should we try to do that for fun? Okay, we have gotten rid of the old malfunctioning marble gates. And then I built this prototype and now I have perfected this. Here is some real 10 million marble without fail. Ah, they're so beautiful. So I've exhausted all my design knowledge and poured it into these parts. They should be able to function 10 million times in a row. I just love them. I hope that these parts will save the Marble Machine X. I'm going to be very ambitious with how I mount them to the machine. Earlier I just welded them onto the machine and then you saw me angle grind them away several times. So I want to take more care in how I design the mounting brackets for these parts and that is going to come in an upcoming episode of the Marble Machine X. I'm so happy for everyone supporting this project. I heard that Wintergatan Patreon page is number 105 in the world. I heard last month that it was the largest in Sweden, which was like baffling, but that we are 105 in the world is kind of amazing. Thanks to everyone who supports this crazy project through Patreon and through YouTube memberships. You are pushing me to perform the 10 million craziness that I'm trying to design right here. Wish me luck.